Warning! Just making sure you're real. Should have had a V8. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Gotham, the SCNI TV podcast for Gotham. Season 3, episode 19, All Will Be Judged. I'm, I'm sorry, not... we're not filming this live from Gotham? No, uh, I am. Wow. But oh. you guys are not. I mean, um, I know where there's some Gotham, you know, vehicles in stash in a yard, like, down the train a little bit, so I could, you know, be with Gotham things. Well, I'm your host, Dom, and this is Nikki, and that is John. And we're not in Gotham. <laughs> No, no, we're not no, in just Gotham. Me. Just me. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you how hard I laughed when <laughs> Nigma did the should have had a V eight punch to to Penguin's head. It was it was the the combination of Nigma actually doing that to Penguin and then the thwang of the bars when <laughs> Penguin recoiled and hit his head forward. And, and the look I on had... his face. The look on his face, nonetheless. Oh my god. I had to rewind it, like, I don't know how many times. Yeah, it yeah, was that was perfect. really funny. Oh my god, I laughed at that. I laughed at, um... At, probably shouldn't have laughed, but I laughed really hard when Alfred stabbed uh, Catherine in the Catherine. hand. Mm-hmm. And then goes, I'm a butler. Like... <laughs> I laughed really hard at that. And, and uh, he's a real stabby butler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there, there was a lot of funny comedy moments in this episode, despite it being a really, like, heavy, heavy episode. Yeah. Um, but with Nigma and Penguin, uh, you know, they're they're in adjacent cells captured in the, the Court of Owls. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, Nigma is just, he can't believe Penguin's still alive. He cannot, like can't even fathom how he could still be alive. Um, and uh, he, he ends up saying, you're more of a cockroach than a penguin. Uh, you're <laughs> difficult to kill. So I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Should should we change the penguin's name to cockroach? I think that's that's more uh, more suiting for him. But, you know, cockroaches skitter, whereas penguin, a penguin wobbles like a penguin. So, I don't know. They're going off of looks here, you know, one of those stereotypical, like, oh, judge a book by its cover. I mean, to be fair, I think with how bad he was looking in the cell, I think he could pass more for a cockroach. So, you know. Yeah, true. I mean, he was pretty squirmy on the ground. Yeah. It's true. And then uh, Penguin refers to uh, Nigma as Ed and Riddler. I guess, flips out. And Penguin's just like, Ed? Edward? 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 Eddie boy! Edward? <laughs> Reminded me of, like, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. You know, it's just yeah. like, you know, how many different ways can you say Ed? Um, and uh, I kind of got the, the combination of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and then Stewie from Family Guy, guy going, Mom, 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 Mommy, 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 <laughs> mommy. <laughs> Mama! Because <laughs> that would annoy me. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then uh, we find out uh, that Nigma has actually stolen a sleeping dart from uh, from one of the guards, uh, and instead of using it on the guard to escape like he wanted to, he just made a blow dart out of a piece of paper and uh, shot Penguin right in the neck with it, which hysterical. Like there are so many funny scenes this episode; it is ridiculous. Um, and then he tries to escape, and, and Penguin can't really yell out, so he takes his his uh, metal dinner tray and starts banging it everywhere to alert the guards, and they realize they if they, they keep at each other, they're never going to get out of there. Yeah. So they make a pack to make a plan, escape together, and then have a six-hour window where they, they don't kill each other. I'm honestly surprised that they honored it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was expecting somebody to throw the first punch, but it didn't happen. So, no. I, I I think they still, despite their differences, still respect each other somewhat. Yeah. So, 
I, I guess I wasn't too surprised. It was just pretty funny when they were outside. They were kind of just like holding the weapons out, just like, Are you gonna drop it? Because I'll drop it if you drop it. But if you don't <laughs> drop it, I ain't drop it. Yeah. No, you hang up. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh God. But then Nigma's just like, look, you're worthless. Um, you're not you're not gonna be able to uh to do you know, anything by yourself. You know, we have uh Barbara in charge of the underworld, you know, I, I have you know, all my intelligent all this Penguin's like, Yeah, but I have an army of minions created by Hugo Strange and Nigma's just like Oh okay. <laughs> you know. Great. Uh, Brian asked who the third cage is for. Uh, I think it was just there, in case yeah. they had more than two captors. Yes, yeah, their jail. Yeah. Um, but the the actual escape cracked me up because when when Nigma slit penguin slit penguin's throat, uh, <laughs> I, I, I see like chunks of something falling off of it. I'm like, what is going on right now? How are the guards like even? falling for this and and then i was like oh that's jello <laughs> mm -hmm. and then you just have the guard go wait is that jello <laughs> and i was like after Bangu was down on the ground and like you really saw it too it was just like it was ridiculous it was it was unbelievable it worked it did it did mm -hmm. um then we had uh selena right she shows up at uh bruce manor to kill, not Bruce. Oh, yeah. M murder, not Bruce, yeah. Just um, shiv the guy. And, yeah, shiv them right in the side. They, they have this big blowout. She even twisted it. Like, she... mm. it was really nasty. Yeah, well, we know he, he doesn't feel any kind of pain. Maybe yeah. maybe emotional pain, that's about it. Uh, feels. Yeah, right in the feels. Uh, but during this, when, when Alfred sees, you know, that he's shanked on the side, he's bleeding and he's not, you know, even wincing at the pain, he realized that is not Bruce. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, they proceed to have a headbutting match, which, uh, was way more entertaining than any fight scene I've ever seen. <laughs> it really was. Like, what is with this episode? <laughs> it's just like, the funnies are back to back to back. Except when I got to the Mad Hatter part, but that's another issue. But, like, just the exchange of looks after each headbutt, and then finally, not Bruce, just gets Alfred, and <laughs> he just kind of, like, fumbles back. His, his face is complete shock and surprise. It was, yeah, yeah, I don't even know. This episode was great. Yep. And, and it was really funny, because it's like, the point of a headbutt is that, like, your opponent's supposed to feel it more than you do. But he doesn't feel it. Right. So why'd you headbutt him back? Yeah. <laughs> like, you was just the worst doing thing more Yeah. He's just hurting himself at this point. Because uh -huh. it's, it, you know, to headbutt some, it still freaking hurts you, but... Yeah. And yeah. then, and then not Bruce takes the fire poker mm. and plays golf with his face. We didn't see anything on his face, though, later on in the episode. I was really surprised. I was expecting, like, a slash or something, but yeah, I don't know. he seemed to be fine. He definitely even played have golf like a with Alfred. Lip. I know that much. I don't know where. Yeah. It, I mean, we didn't see where it hit him, but maybe it hit him in the back. Maybe. But it looked like it had that upward, like, Tiger Woods kind of swing to it. Yeah. So. You'd have, a, you'd have a knot in your head for that. Yeah. But it just doesn't seem like the kind of swing that would hit somebody in the back, you know? Maybe if he was down on all fours and it hit him in the gut, or, but he wasn't. So I don't know. It was just it was a weird swing uh, to go with that scene. But um, I guess not. Bruce takes off, and uh, Alfred and Selena are like licking their wounds, and uh, Selena ends up refusing to help Alfred. She's like straight up, nope, not doing it. And Alfred, he kind of went off on her. Oh, he laid into her real good. Yeah. She deserved it. I thought so. Yeah. I do not I disagree. Mean, I did see a couple comments, um, not in chat, but like around the internet saying that Alfred was talking to a child. He should have, you know, he should have, should have done, he should have approached it differently. 
you can't approach Selena as a child because she doesn't see herself as a child. She lives on the streets. She is her own adult right now. Right now. She's only 16, but she is an adult in her own eyes. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to treat her as much so she can actually get the point. Because if you talk down to her, she's either going to get pissed off or ignore you. Yeah. She's going to walk away yeah. either to way. To be honest, Here. I had more of a problem with Alfred beating up clone Bruce. Because um, <laughs> that, that's like physical assault on a minor, you know what I mean? Like, I had more issues watching that than I did what Alfred did to Selena, to be honest. Um, I think yeah. Selena deserved everything that, that Alfred said. Um, yes, yes, it was really harsh, but she still deserved it, you know? She, the thing, like I said, like, if he would have did it any other way, she would have got up, walked away, ignored him, got pissed off. That like, she wouldn't, It wouldn't have sunk in. But you saw her face after Alfred said fine and walked away that she was actually thinking about what he said. Yeah, he's like, go run away just like your mother. Exactly. And so, you know, that's going to have the opposite reaction. She She's going to be like, oh, I don't want to be like my mother. And, you know, she's going to stay. You know, but mm -hmm. this, this was kind of the last we saw of her this episode. So, um... I think she's going to be very pivotal in the return of uh, Bruce, and you know what we see with um, with Bruce in the mansion. Right, they're in some. I, I thought they were at Wayne Manor at first, and I'm like, wait, this is outside of Gotham. This is very, very far from Gotham. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was like, every depiction of the Batman movies and stuff that I've seen, Wayne Manor is never really in Gotham. It's yeah. always, like, way out in the middle of nowhere, and the Batcave is in, like, the mountainside next to it, you know? Yeah. Like, so, I'm not exactly sure where Bruce Manor is, but this definitely was not it. This was much further away from, from the city. Uh, mm -hmm. It overlooked the city, and you saw Bruce kind of, like, lingering off and, and looking there. But the Shaman kind of wants to take away the pain of... Uh, the, the painful memories the, the, and the emotions that are attached to his parents' murder. Um, and we had that symbolized with the, uh, the pearls in that, like, dream world thing. The acupuncture dream world. Yeah. Um, it, it, the, the dream brainwash world, because that's exactly what freaking happened. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And at first, Bruce can't do it. Um, and then, uh, it, the the truth is revealed to Bruce through uh, one of the shaman's memories and him at the court of owls and they're talking about the uh, the the Wayne murder, right? And uh, it seems that the court is actually the ones that hired uh, hired for the murder of Bruce's parents and uh, because they they were threatening to expose the court. Yeah. So. Um. The shaman now shows all this to Bruce and says, look, I want to take the court down. I need your help. You have to do this. Put your, you know, your emotions away mm -hmm. for the sake of your parents. You know, which is really weird because if you give your emotions away, you're no longer attached to the thing you're trying to uh, protect or, mm -hmm. you know, or Pretty much. have vengeance for. He, he uses his loss of his parents to fuel the Batman stuff. So I was like, no, you need that. No, yeah. don't give that one up. No, don't do it. I was waiting for <laughs> when he dropped the pearls in the safe, then reached the other hand in and pulled everything out. That's what I was hoping he was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> all my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Running away like that, waddling with his arms full. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's obvious that he's going to snap out and he's going to like, he's going to snap out of his daze and he's probably going to turn around and kill the shaman or something. Or at least really, really not. hurt him. I hope the shaman I... turns out to be Ra's al Ghul. Like, that's what I'm hoping. Oh, boy. Like, yes, it is a much older Ra's al Ghul than, than we are used to, but Ra's is immortal. He, it really doesn't yeah. matter what doesn't his his form is, you know? Um, and there are multiple Ra's al Ghuls. We could have somebody kill this Ra's al Ghul and become the new Ra's al Ghul. I, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but we also learn that Talon, uh, being attached to the court is brainwashed pretty much the same way like Bruce was, uh, where any command that is given, including cutting off your finger and potentially eating it, uh, is, is not even a thought. It's just a voluntary reaction. Bandage that up. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they, they get a bunch of orphans, and they raise them. Uh, mm -hmm. And they grow up like this, so that that puts a little more, you know, background to Talon, because we, we, we always called that one assassin, we just called him Talon. Mm -hmm. And he, he is Talon. And, They're uh, all Talon. Yeah. They're all Talon. But it's just like, they don't have names. That's just, that's them. Talon. Mm -hmm. That's it. Nope. They're a weapon. Yep. And they're Assassin's Creed wannabes, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Got that wrist blade. <laughs> they, do. they do. Um, so Alfred then proceeds to go to see Jim. He's trying to get a hold of Jim. And uh, he goes in and he's like, Bruce is missing. He's been abducted. Well, how long has he been gone? I don't know. Maybe a week. Harvey's like, Dish. what? <laughs> you don't know how long he's been missing. You have one job, Alfred. <laughs> one job. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there was a very, very convincing clone in his place, so you yeah. can't fault Alfred. Do you know how that sounds to Harvey? <laughs> Harvey was just not having a good day. No. Harvey's a simple man. No, he was not. Because <laughs> they went to check out the uh, the basement of that facility, and uh, uh, they find the secret room with the crystal owl, you know, much like the one that, that Alfred and Bruce had. Um, that Selena and her mom stole and all that. Um, and they find out, when they shine a light into it, it reveals a map of Gotham. Uh, and the map shows all these secret kind of uh, locations that they have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at this point now, in comes a grenade, and we're introduced to the actual executioner. They did it. They actually they made did it. the executioner. I was oh, shocked because Executioner, if I'm not mistaken, was the animated series only. Like he was only in that. Yeah. Right? He well, he was at least there first. Yeah, I don't think he was in the comics uh, before the animated series. No. So when you know everybody was suspecting, oh, Barnes is going to be the Executioner, everything. I really liked the theory. I just didn't think it was actually ever going to happen. Uh, and it was fantastic. It really was. Um, you see, uh, him come in, he knocks out both Jim and Harvey, he takes Jim to an old, uh, like, broken down courthouse, and, uh, he, uh, um, he's, he's sitting there with Catherine, and then Catherine is like, look, um, I don't know how you, you got a hold of Hugo Strange, you know, who else have you told? Uh, I'm assuming Harvey, but who else, who else? And he's like, no one. And then that's when Executioner is going to put him on trial, be his judge, jury, and Executioner. Mm -hmm. um, or at least saying the judge. I thought he was the Executioner. He called the himself comics. the Executioner. So... Was he the judge? In, or, I mean, in the cartoon, was he the judge or was he the Executioner in the cartoon? Uh, oh, no, he is the judge. The yeah. judge. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I guess maybe he's not the judge. He's a form of that then, because he called himself the executioner this episode. I mean, okay. he, he is, but they may not have. They may have shifted the name. Who cares? Yeah. yeah I mean, at least I mean, I'm a little upset that he didn't have like, because I don't. If you guys ever saw this show, he's got like the powdered wig. Yeah. Like down to here, it's like really funny looking. Yeah. I, really, I mean, really I like, thought he, I thought his costume was already a little off, so putting that on him would would have made me like, okay, this episode is really ridiculous. I would have loved it. <laughs> I would have loved it if he just threw it on when he was being the judge, you know, and then when he was being the jury and the executioner, he took it off. Took it off. Yes. Like every okay. time he judged someone, he would throw that on. That would have been hysterical. <laughs> Where would he keep it? In the middle of the In street. His utility you. belt. <laughs> The same utility <laughs> belt he was holding his grenades on that Jim just, you know, pulled the pin on randomly. He's just going to have a wig hanging on his belt as he's walking down yeah. the street judging people. Yep. Everybody's going to judge him for the wig that's on his belt. <laughs> you know, but gonna... the grenade was completely unnecessary. It did absolutely nothing to save Jim. No, nothing. Nothing, like at all, nothing. Because uh, GCPD was there moments later. I mean, I guess it was it was kind of a 
Jim's trying to fight for him. You know, it shows that he's still got fighting him up to the very last minute. But yeah. I mean, it, he didn't, didn't know the police it, were, were right yeah, there. Yeah, he didn't know, but it also... It surprised um, Barnes for at least a few seconds, enough to give him a little extra time. Mm-hmm. I mean... Good effort, Jim. <laughs> he tried. I mean, I'm assuming he he thought that it was going to go off and, you know, he'd be able well, to get out, but, you know, yeah. it yeah. didn't work. And uh, when GCPD busts in, he jumps out the window and escapes. So um, then we have uh, Catherine, who's actually taken into custody, um, and it's revealed she's actually not the leader of the Court of Owls. No, the shaman's over her head even. So, I mean, I don't know if he's the actual leader, but he definitely has some say over her. Because we saw in flashbacks, too, that he was the one doing certain things. And, like, in the memory, too, um, he was talking uh, talking to others about killing the Waynes. Mm-hmm. And that it shouldn't have happened because they were leaders of Gotham and all that stuff. So, yeah, this, that seemed like it was before Catherine. Mm. So, yeah. And at the meantime, this is when Alfred is trying to uh, explain the the clone thing to to Harvey, and Harvey's just like, "Yeah, we got Catherine right now." And uh, and he goes, "Catherine from the Court of Owls? Yeah, yeah, she's being interrogated right now." And oh my God, Alfred just took off. He went went running and uh, barges in. She's like, oh, this good cop, bad cop routine. Really? You're going to throw this at me? Alfred demands to know where Bruce is. And then when she doesn't give it up, proceeds to stab her in the hand. Right? Uh-huh. And my jaw hit the floor. Oh, yeah. I was just like, oh, my God, Alfred. And, and then the yeah. butler line, my jaw came back up off the floor and then hit the floor a bunch of times as I was <laughs> laughing really hard. Right. Because, like, <laughs> I was like, this line is ridiculous. I, uh, it was so funny. And I'm like, Butler's got a knife. Butler carries a knife. Whoa. Okay. All right. <laughs> wow, Alfred. He, he was in rare form this time. Yeah. I have to say. I mean, he's known when Bruce has gone missing before because it was Bruce's idea. It was Bruce's choice. He went to lived on the, he went and lived on the street with Selena, you know, Alfred knew how to find him then, even, even then Bruce is legit gone and he has no idea where and what is happening to him. Yeah. He's flipping out. He is flipping his shit. He has, he, he made a promise to his parents, Bruce's parents, that he'd always be by Bruce's side and protect him. And, being the kind of man Alfred is, that's like first and foremost in his mind. Yeah. And now while she's being interrogated, Barnes comes back into uh, GCPD. He starts shooting the place up, taking all the guards out. I mean, Gotham gets hit and destroyed. I mean, Gotham G- uh, GCPD um, gets destroyed maybe once every four episodes. Yeah, it's we did talk ridiculous. about this about four episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. The GCPD, like, how do they keep recruits coming in? Because it must be, like, they must be getting a lot of, like, risk pay or something because it's really high risk just to even stand in the station, so. No, I said they get good dental. That's, that's, mm, that's what it was. Yeah, that, yeah. Mm, yeah. Kids, kids need braces. I mean, what are you going to do? In the meantime, Alfred... Uh, Harvey and, and Catherine and Jim, uh, they go to escape. Jim's there and he's trying to distract uh, Barnes. And this is when Catherine is just like, can we cut out this nonsense uh, and, and get me out of here? And that's when uh, Barnes just kind of lops her head off. And once again, sat there staring at the screen with my mouth wide open. Yeah, it was, it was uh-huh. funny because she was like, she was like, you know, Barnes, get me out of here, you know. And she was like demanding that he help her, and he was just like, "No." Like, you <laughs> don't know what he is, do you? No. <laughs> it's like you. She's done her research. She knows about the virus, but I, I guess she doesn't understand that she thinks the people she's that above are everybody. She thinks she has the power to control everybody, but the fact is, with this virus, you can't control shit. Yeah. No. 
I mean, Jim Even the did people seed. Who have it can't. During the, the, the fake court hearing, Jim did kind of seed in uh, Barnes' head that, you know, the people he was working for were no better than, than him. Mm-hmm. So you saw him stop and, you know, he kind of thought about it for a little bit. But, you know, so so I think part of that is Jim's doing the, the, the little seed he planted. But Good on Jim. Yeah. If he can plant seeds of uh murder it's not even murder it's just doubt because especially in like a, a, a an insane person's mind so they kind of just do what they want to do right well so jim is insane especially so he in can this... think like an insane person right is he is is that is that what we're going that's with? that's what i'm going with <laughs> that uh, that gotham is just a whole elaborate dream world and no i didn't say that no but like to, like a hallucination and for Jim that that's no. what this that's what Gotham is just, no. No. yeah this is, Jim is just as insane as everybody else that lives in the city you kind of have to be mm. I think I think Harvey is probably the most down to earth he is he's he's the realest motherfucker on the show <laughs> and the drunkest <laughs> and that's the drunkest tr- was he drunk this episode he was drinking from that flask yeah. Oh, oh, right. He was okay. He yeah. Was. He well. To be fair, the situation was pretty intense. Oh, sure. Yeah. Not a play, <laughs> but you know, it happened. Yeah. And then uh, we have Lee. Starts off dreaming of Mario. Some weird blood drinking wine glass ritual thing. Um, and, and Mario telling her to take her medicine. And then she's creeped out by this, so she goes to see Jervis Tech, a.k.a. Mad Hatter, and asks why she infected Mario and not her. Which he responds to, because I wanted to make you hate Jim. Jim doesn't deserve love. All this stuff. But he goes... You're so quick to blame Jim. You're so quick to blame me. But who should you really blame? And she said, myself. Yeah. She then goes to GCPD after all this takes place. Barnes blowing the place up, shooting it up, whatever he's doing. Steals the virus. Still a dick to Jim, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even after knowing that Jervis did all this, you know. And then proceeds to inject herself with the virus. Now, on one hand, we all know we're not... Everybody who watches this podcast knows we're not Lee fans at all. So, on one hand, I'm, I'm aggravated with this. On the other hand, this could be the Barbara situation all over again. <laughs> where we hated Barbara more than any character on this show... Then they gave her this crazy storyline where they completely turned her character around. And she's one of my favorite characters on the show. And it's something that I never... Like, you you asked me back in season one if Barbara would make the best villain on the show. Well, not the best, but one of the best villains on this show. And yeah. I would laugh at you. And now here we are, and I'm loving everything that Barbara does. I'm hanging on it, and I want to see more of Barbara all the time. Is that going to happen with Lee? I certainly don't think so, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. I, I just, man, you you missed last week. Unfortunately, that's where I figured out why I hate Lee so much. Okay, <laughs> and you know, it was really great because I was like, oh my god, someone told her what I needed to tell her mm. this episode, and I was like, okay, good, maybe this is her chance to. Bring it around and say, look, Jim, I'm sorry I've been giving you such a raw deal. My B. Mm-hmm. And then, no. She's just like, I'm going to double down on the stupid, infect myself with the crazy people virus. Because I can. <laughs> what was your motivation? Like, what? No, I, John, I don't John, it. It, it's for science. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, motivation, <laughs> the motivation to inject yourself is... She, she knows the virus brings out people's dark side. It amplifies it, all this stuff. Um, she just got through saying that there's no justice in Gotham, right? There's, there's no uh, consequence for Jim. 
Like, look at him. Everything Barnes did was right. And look what you did. You destroyed everything. Look, he destroyed this because there's no justice. So she's she's getting ready to take matters into her own hands. That's that's why she injected herself. She and, and, has a motive to do it. But, it. May not be a good one, but she has. I one. mean, but then, but then again, I mean, and again, this goes back to the same thing. You're not. You're just as bad as the people you condemn now, and you basically have been this whole time. Because basically, my argument was, you were benefiting off of the fruits of a criminal and his illegal activities, mm-hmm. and yet you condemn people for doing wrong things, even though yeah. what you did was wrong. And now you're going to probably do even more wrong things because you're a psychotic person. Yeah. Yep. I would just like to point out the like the moment Dom mentioned Lee's name, both sides of my head started to throb, and I could feel my pulse just wanting to escape from my head right now. Like (laughs) I've just mm, this lady. She just needs to stop. I, I feel like. The actress, I love her. I loved her, obviously, in Firefly. You know, she was amazing. Um, I liked her in V. Mm. And then Gotham comes around, and the moment she stepped on screen, I was like, this is a terrible character. And it's not. It's not gotten any better. And right here, right now, when her eyes go dark and the veins start popping out, is the turning point, either to get worse or to get better. Only one of which gonna happen because she's not gonna stay the same. So it's either gonna get better or it's gonna get worse. Exactly. I'm, I'm kind of expecting it to go worse, but I'm hoping it goes better. That, that's that's what it comes it, down to. We're hoping for the Barbara Keane uh, effect here. Is yeah. what we're hoping for. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Uh, so do you guys have anything else for this episode? Nope. I don't think so. I, I just don't want Bruce to be a talent. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, that would that would be terrible. I, I missed Ivy. Yeah, no Ivy this episode. I was kind of hoping that, you know... You know, Selena fought the good fight when she was with not Bruce. Like, you know, fighting not Bruce. But I thought she'd be... I don't know, a little bit more... N- not animated, but like... Agile. Because of, you know, we had the whole cat brigade before Ivy healed her. So it's like, she's getting a double whammy. And I feel like there should have been an effect that we could have seen, even in the slightest sense. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, she did just get out of a coma. So Yeah, that's true. That's true. She's probably still a little wonky. Yep. Uh, next episode is called Pretty Hate Machine. Gordon races against the clock to save the city from the Alice Tech virus uh, when Lee Tompkins intercepts with a plan of her own. Also, Alfred sees a big change in Bruce Wayne after his work with the Shaman. And meanwhile, some of Gotham's most deranged villains band together. Uh, We also have the return of Fish Mooney. Okay. Also, that's a Nine Inch Nails album. Hmm. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. For what it's worth, I, maybe they'll play a Nine Inch Nails song. That would be great. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> so, Bruce gets to go home. Apparently. He's brainwashed. In, in what state, we don't know, but... He's yeah. going to show up and, and Alfred's going to think he's another clone. And we know what happens to clones with Alfred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he beats him steps. It's like, completely senseless. Yeah. And what we saw from the talents, they don't feel any pain, so if uh, Bruce is truly converted... They don't react they, to pain. I don't know if they true. can feel it. That, right, that they don't, don't react know. to it. So. I don't know, Bruce hasn't really been brainwashed as long as the others, so I'm pretty sure certain things can still get through to him. So Probably, but especially because what I, I, I see is since the other ones were, um, were orphans, and technically Bruce is an orphan, but... Um, because they grew up without knowing their family and having, you know, whatever. They come and have a, you know, they, they have a clean slate because they have nothing to tie them back to their old life. But Bruce is going to be different because he has all these memories and all these things that, that do tie him back to his old life. So that may play um, a role into in Bruce uh, resisting 
the mind control. So, it, it seems like they've built him up physically, and uh, they're taking him down mentally, where I think it's only going to actually strengthen him mentally in the end. So, we will see. Um, so, I think that about does it. Nikki, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Awesome. John, where can the people find you? Well, for right now, you can find me at No More No More, but I'm probably going to change that to, like, Lee Fan 76 oh. like, real soon. So, mm. it's, it's going to be great. Lee nice. is in uh, um, Lee from the show, or Lee, our, our faithful viewer? How yes. are we spelling Lee in the first place, you know? Uh, L- L-E-E? Yeah, the bad way. <laughs> Just love her so much, guys. No results for Lee Fan 76. You better hop on that real quick. Somebody's going to steal it. They're on it right now. <laughs> you can find me down below at Phenomenon, P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M. And you can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, <coughs> and right here on YouTube at Slash ASO TV Podcast. For some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Till next time. Mm-hmm. We have three episodes left. That's it. Wow, everything's ending so quickly. And only two weeks. Last mm-hmm. week's a double episode, so. Ooh.